Now, Paul Nealon is a Wisconsin executive, entrepreneur, and inventor. He has extensive leadership and operational experience in the manufacturing industry, but he needs more lawyers, as well as a record of restoring jobs in the American economy. Mr. Nealon is challenging the Speaker of the United States Representatives, uh, that's uh, Paul Ryan, uh, in Wisconsin's first congressional district Republican primary election, August 9th. So that's coming up here. Uh, boom, tomorrow, Mr. Nealon serves as senior vice president of operations for his company that leads the industry in water filtration. We were just talking about that. And uh, disinfection technologies, or civilization, I would say. Since 2013, Mr. Nealon has served as an advisory board member of Operation Homefront, a Wisconsin nonprofit organization with strong record of bringing direct financial assistance to the families of active duty service members. Paul Nealon, N-E-H-L-E-N.com. Everybody should get behind him. Uh, just to put more heat, we already brought down the rhino, um, you know, who, of course, was installed by Newt Ganrich, and uh, that was the former speaker, Boehner, or, or Crybaby. And then now we have Paul Ryan, who I guess is a handsome guy, you know, Mr. Blue Eyes. But, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of people, well, I mean, I, I know Paul Nealon's story is interesting. I don't want to get it wrong. I remember hearing about it. The reason he started running against him was he was tired of being betrayed. Is that is that accurate, Mr. Nealon? That's absolutely accurate. Thanks for having me on, Alex. Um, you know, I, I, I believed Paul Ryan's shtick. He absolutely is, uh, he's the head of the snake. Let's, let's no mistake, let's make no mistake about it. He absolutely is the most open borders, anti-worker, pro-Wall Street member of Congress on either side of the aisle. And he is the head of the snake, and we're going to take him off. We are going to cut the head off the snake because he absolutely has no moral qualms at all about shipping our jobs over to China. He, he is completely beholden to Wall Street, and we just don't pay well enough here in Wisconsin's district, first district. He gets paid a lot better by uh, big foreign, big corporations, not foreign, excuse me, big corporations that do the bidding of maybe a thousand families in this country that, that enrich themselves over the destruction of America. Sure. Well, they fence the money too, but a lot of the money is foreign. Look at Hillary's, look at Hillary's foundation. Uh, get, I mean, get back to yourself and why you decided to go after this guy, because, you know, they, they've been selling him for a decade on conservative talk radio as this little angel of conservatism. But when you get into his actual votes, He's the opposite of that. Exactly right. I, I, I'll, I'll out myself and say, hey, I was a Paul Ryan supporter until he came out as the mercenary champion of Fast Track Trade Promotion Authority uh, for this Trans-Pacific Partnership. And when I read that, I read what Senator Sessions, uh, God bless him, went out and, and reported on it. Alex, you know how I had to go to the New Zealand government website. I had to go to the New Zealand website because our own government had that information hidden from us. And you know what? I found out that everything that Senator Sessions reported on was absolutely true by going to the New Zealand website. Article 27 of TPP gives up U.S. sovereignty. It reduces the length of U.S. patents. I just got my fifth U.S. patent three weeks ago tomorrow. It gives, it gives H-1Bs and H-2Bs, we won't even be talking about H-1Bs and H-2Bs because foreign companies will be able to bring all the workers they want to this United States. It won't even be the United States anymore. It'll be the United States of Asia. Paul Ryan is the globalist, soulless globalist head of the snake, and that's why tomorrow we're going to cut the head of that snake off. We're absolutely going to have Wisconsin's Independence Day tomorrow because we are sick to death of his lies and his deceit and his working on behalf of corporations, he could care less about us here in Wisconsin, workers. He could care less about Puerto Ricans. And yet he pushed through the Puerto Rico hedge fund bailout. He could care less about Wisconsin's pensioners, which way were sold those junk bonds invested in Puerto Rico. But his hedge fund managers, oh, he loves them. He loves them because they put money in his campaign coffers, and he has got visions of running in 2020. That's why he wants to stab Mr. Trump in the back at every opportunity. He doesn't want to see him succeed. I've said this before. Paul Ryan should be reporting in-kind contributions to Hillary Clinton's campaign because he's working on her behalf as opposed to working on behalf of Donald Trump.
Well, I like in your race and others, win, lose, or draw is patriotic duty. And I appreciate your time and energy to do this because, you know, I remember you talking about that when you first started running, how, how, how folks have been betrayed by him. Uh, remember Eric Cantor. Now, now, he was way ahead in the polls on election day he lost. We've learned these polls, especially in key races, trying to prop folks up, are absolutely staged. And, yeah. uh, and, and, and then meanwhile, a little-known economics professor beats him 55 to 44. That's Dave Bratt who we've had on the broadcast, we should get him back up. I remember polls back at the time said he was going to be losing by 30 points. Now, they've got ridiculous polls even worse out on you, which shows me how desperate they are, because if you can take down this 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 lead fake rhino, uh, that's bye-bye to the rest of these guys. Right. Yeah, we're sending a message here. You know, I will never stop running against Speaker Ryan. I am going to take him down. God is my witness. I am going to be on him every moment of every day until I have his seat. I'm not going away. I'm going to take that seat tomorrow. And if by some miracle he keeps it, and I say miracle because I'm telling you, Alex, we are knocking thousands of doors a day. We hit almost 10,000. Oh, I was about to say, sir, sir, we, we, we couldn't find anyone in California that was for Hillary God bless them, they were all, they were Democrats for Sanders. And then at the polls, eight out of 10 people were for uh, Sanders. So I don't know, she'd have 500 people, he'd have 20,000. She has 1,000, Trump has 50,000. I mean, something's going on here with these polls. I had more people at my uh, campaign rally with Ann Coulter uh, on Saturday than Hillary Clinton is having at her events, to give you some sense of that. And that's not... That's not saying a lot because she's, she has hardly anybody there unless they're her staffers. But Speaker Ryan has betrayed Wisconsin's first district, has betrayed Wisconsin, has betrayed this nation. Well, you live he up there. What type of guy is he? I mean, we know he does the opposite of what he says. I mean, how, why, does he, why does he? I mean, really, I mean, there you are with a business with all these employees running all this stuff. It's hard to do in America, but you're doing it. I, I do the same thing because we're not going to you know, give into this garbage. But, I mean, he just, why do they love to do this to our country? It's the money. It is the, it is the pure, raw chase for money and power. There's, there's, there's no question. The vast majority of Paul Ryan's campaign financing comes from inside the D.C. Beltway. When you stop and think about how he could be voting on Wisconsin's behalf when most of his money is the D.C. Beltway, when I saw his first FEC reports and saw that, the vast majority, 83% of his campaign financing came from outside of Wisconsin's first district, the vast majority of which came from inside the D.C. Beltway. It just, it, it, it sickened me like you can't imagine, because here's a guy that I put signs in the ground for. Here's a guy who I made phone calls on behalf of. I was a diamond sponsor and fall fest here. Got my picture taken with my wife with the guy. I gave my hard-earned money and my hard-earned time to support this guy. And, and what's he do? He turns around and champions this trade deal he's going to give away. I've had, I've had over 10,000 employees in my lifetime, Alex. A Fortune 500 in charge of Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. I had over $2 billion worth of business reporting to me. Do you know where I started out? I started out on the factory floor. I was on the game degree at night, 12 year program. That's where I started out. I eventually ran that factory. I've run factories all over the United States. I shut down businesses in Mexico and brought those jobs to the United States. Just last August, I shut down the factory portion of a business we bought in Canada, brought those jobs back to the East Coast and moved jobs from the East Coast to Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. And I did it with, with China. I brought product lines back China, put them in Indiana and in Florida, every case, every case, I've done it more profitably. And Absolutely. You know Globalism is set up to, and, and again, we're not to get China or anybody, it's set up to give the people nothing and consolidate control. What Ross Perot talked about, a giant sucking sound. We should use the West to build up the third world, not transfer the West to the third world, but only selectively and then implode the whole planet. Why do you think the globalist Paul Nealon paulnealon.com, uh, in, in, in the big uh, primary tomorrow against Speaker of the House Paul Ryan. Why do you think they're doing this system when, as you pointed out, long-term globalism is not profitable? I know why. It's about consolidation of control. 
working yeah. with totalitarian countries and third world nations, you can consolidate control, you can undercut, and you can transfer the power to yourself. And I think that's really nasty. I mean, if I was a you know, rich billionaire or whatever, I would want to see lots of businesses and lots of industry like Henry Ford called for and employees that could buy the cars you're making and prosperity. But instead we hear it's the time of austerity. We need to be poor now from Obama speaking from red carpets in front of giant, you know, Air Force One. These guys have already these guys have already dissolved borders mentally. They are they already made the switch. The rest of us are. Considered, considered serfs to them. And That's right. They got a plan and we're in the way of it. Right. That's exactly right. And, and you know that as I've been campaigning around this district and I've been getting some more notoriety, these guys are doing everything they can. The Wisconsin GOP, the party machine, uh, Reince Priebus, and the entire, the entire machine is so clamped down on the levers of power and, and, and wanting to stay on those levers of power to keep me from, from securing America's jobs. They want open borders so bad, Paul Ryan couldn't help but say on CNN, on his, uh, I was calling it the CNN Never Trump infomercial, Paul Ryan was on there talking about how we need to keep us, we need to change immigration laws so we can keep a steady stream of low-cost labor coming into this country. I mean, to have somebody say we need to keep down wages in this country, the entire time Paul Ryan has been in Congress, the last 18 years, wages have been down. You go to the grocery store, things cost more. We've actually, we're actually losing ground in the middle class. Forget about, forget about um, inner city or, or anywhere, uh, people just getting onto the, just getting onto the ladder. Um, African-Americans, re legal immigrants, recent legal immigrants in my district have said to me, we, we worked hard to come here. We love this country. We, we say the Pledge of Allegiance. We, we salute the flag. We love this country. And, and we will be damned if we want Speaker Ryan to let everybody in here in front of us. We have a legal immigration well, Absolutely. System. And, and again, I can't go to China or Mexico and show up and have my baby for free. And then the baby's a citizen. And I get it, it, they sell it as this loving thing, they're using the immigrants to drive down the wages. They're using them as a new political group they can control. And again, none of these countries would let us do this there. This is, the, this is they've used America's openness, the globalists have. And, and look, I, I think you and, and many others, um, like Brat, are really the bellwether. And whether you win tomorrow or not, it doesn't matter because you're going to win long term. As you said, you're never going to give up. You started out on the factory floor 12 years, you know, in college, getting through that, you know, and then managing, you know, billions of dollars a year worldwide and running things. You're a hard working, smart guy. And that's the secret in this world is people are actually looking for folks who are smart, want to take action, don't want to just be jellyfish. And it is that spirit, that awakening to the tyranny that you can't put the genie back in the bottle, in my view. I don't see how the globalists are going to get their program through. When, when, look at the Brexit. Look, I, I think the tide's turning. Absolutely. I've got friends over in London. I lived, when I, when I was running uh, those, those other regions, I had a flat in London that I only saw on the weekends. And man, I would love landing in Heathrow or, or um, Gatwick and talking to the cabbies. Man, did they, I, I used to love uh, running them up. And thank God you guys stayed on the pound. And thank God Poland stayed on the Zloty. And thank God Denmark stayed on the kroner because otherwise they've got you by the short hairs. They absolutely have you. The EU, let me throw a couple numbers at you. There are 5.5 billion people with a B that make less per day than the average Mexican worker. So what are we going to do? We're going to move them all here. We are going to give them all an opportunity here, put them all on uh, uh, welfare and uh, social assistance. Paul Ryan took money away from our veterans to give to illegal alefare. He did that. When, I, when, when, when you think about what Paul Ryan is capable of doing and what he's Look, done. Look, he's a monster, but just like Ted Bundy, he's a handsome guy. Uh, so you don't understand you're getting in a yellow Volkswagen. Uh, Paul Nealon, paulnealon.com. I hope you win tomorrow. Regardless, you've won by taking action, engaging the public, uh, injecting real issues. Folks can contribute, paulnealon.com. you got family in Wisconsin, you're up there. Get out and vote for this guy in the Republican primary. Look forward to speaking to you in the future, my friend, and hopefully when you're a congressman.
Thank you, Paul. All right, we'll be back, ladies and gentlemen, with more news and more guests straight ahead. I'm Alex Jones.